Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Tiny Gig Builds. This week, we're making an interactive LED touchscreen. Stay tuned if you want to find out what that is. Yeah, like, because we don't even know it. We just think it's called that. Yeah, what do you want to name it? Bills. If we're going to do it that way, I said, well, why do we even... Yeah, why even bother then? Yeah. Folks, we're in the backyard, baby. We're doing another build today. Guys, you've seen the coffee table. It had a little bit of malfunction going on here, so we wanted to one-up it and bring you guys something bigger and better. There's a bunch of shorts all over it. It's kind of usable, but only for the WLED kind of function. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the interactiveness. There's we, only yeah. so much good soldering that I can do. Yeah, we, we really <laughs> struggled soldering that. We struggled here. So we wanted to come up with something cool, something interactive that we can use with people coming into place and friends. You know what we got to start off with? We got to start off with the wooden frame. And we'll Bills. go from the... Bills. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, uh, we just did a little test piece here. We're now, we just raised this a little bit so we can cut some grooves in here, just like this piece. Uh, we're gonna do that for each of the four sides so we can kind of fit them in together when we, when we piece it, they'll be able to slide in nice and easy. It's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. Here. I mean, you guys have seen us struggle through this coffee table here. I'm not a professional solder. Oh no. So there were a few malfunctions. There was a lot of shorts because the wires we chose were very thick. So now we know. Now, now we know moving forward for, you know, maybe a future build that we need uh, thinner wires and some soldering practice. Hey, Bongo. We're gonna attempt to take this apart, actually, and uh, use some of these LEDs we already have placed here for the touchscreen we're building now. Did we hot glue the whole, <laughs> did we hot glue the whole back? I think we hot glued every, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> every light oh, that was in here, so sure it, it might be like a battle. Boys. <laughs> Brings back memories. It really does. Uh, usually, we're perfect. We made a little oopsie cut, so there's a little extra, there's a little gap here because we cut it a little tad short. Re generally, we're perfect though. No, every cut I usually go, can it get any better than that? It can't. Uh, we'll, we'll try to fill this gap in here. We'll see how it goes when we're gluing. You know, we might have to put a little bit extra piece of this here to fill it in, but you know, it's no big deal, honestly. Guys, things looking great so far. We're gonna do a little bit of sanding here. The prototype came out good, uh, so now we're gonna sand it up. Yeah, it looks uh, good. We just wanna avoid those splinters. Sand her down. We'll probably, what, should we Mahoney's her? Finish her up with the Mahoney's. Team rub. Call in for a team rub here. Double team rub. Builds. Builds. So to give you an idea of what the final product looks like, we're gonna have this touch uh, screen around it. This is a, a touch screen that kind of senses like a mouse where your finger is by utilizing infrared, similar to how we did the coffee table, except 
there's infrared receivers on one end and infrared emitters on the other. And as you block it, it knows your position based on the disruption in the signals. Now as for the circuit, we're gonna make that right now. I'm gonna make a classic circuit with the integrated circuit that steps up the voltage from the Raspberry Pi to the actual LEDs. Since the Raspberry Pi only outputs at 3.3 volts and we need a five volt signal to these LEDs, we're gonna use a step up voltage circuit and then we're going to power the entire thing with a five volt power supply. Let's get started. It sound right, boy. So we just finished up aligning everything in the back and doing all the cable management. So we have the two power cords, uh, one for the Pi and one for the 5 volt power source. We have everything kind of on standoffs or screws in the back and ready to go. Unfortunately, we have two separate ones coming out the side. We couldn't fit an extension cord in here, but that's fine. Now we're gonna attach the touchscreen to the front. Um, I don't have any magnets. I'm not sure if it's magnetic anyway. It might be aluminum, so we're gonna use some CA glue. And then we're gonna start calibrating the touchscreen. As you can see, the LEDs themselves function really well, and honestly, on itself, it's a good piece of wall art, but we're gonna start adding the tech to it, the old uh, touch screen. Basically, you saw everything in the circuit, how it's set up in the back, and then we have the touch screen that's basically like a mouse. So we plug it in the USB, and we retrieve the, uh, the input events from this, and we dictate where that is on the screen. So we have to calibrate the touch screen so that it knows where the LEDs are in relation to its internal units. As you can see here, the LEDs are not perfectly spaced out, so I actually have to define how far up and how far to the top this LED is, for example, because it's higher than this LED here. So I wrote a little calibrate function just to print out kind of the values as your finger goes through this. As I put my finger over the LED, we'll know exactly which LED that finger is mapping to, and then we'll light that LED a certain coloring code. And as for the code, we're not gonna dive into too much detail, but I'll give you a quick overview, kind of logically how, how it works and what's going on. So once you calibrate the touch screen and the code knows exactly where the LEDs are in relation to the coordinates the touch screen is giving the Pi, we're gonna use the BiblioPixel library to light up the LED matrix, uh, each LED, where that finger pointing is. So for example, I put it here, it lights up, I move up again, it lights up, so forth, just like that. Now there's a lot of different things. We actually made a lot of different programs, so we'll demo them right now, but you can give it a shot, play around, check the code out. I'll add more details in an article if you wanna check out what's going on with the code, but let's run the tape. Yeah, no, the guy is like, we, we need the the liquidity liquidity in your like bank account, and you're like, nah, yeah, I understand. It's just if you take crypto. <laughs> that build came out great. We're pleased with how this came out. We're glad we could kind of recycle through the coffee table and come up with a new build. You know, we had another build planned, but our good Fred Bongo over here decided to smash some stuff up. So we're gonna have to do a little houseworking build next week for you guys. That's right, time gig reno version. Renos. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, tie and gig, we're posting there regularly. We love the support, guys. Builds. Builds.